All I'm saying is Morgan Wallen did nothing wrong. He didn't. And you cannot call a chair a deadly weapon. And just because the chair fell from six stories doesn't mean it's a deadly weapon. Also, like, he's the best country artist yeah. out there right now. And, like, Nashville is known for country. So what are you going to do? Put him in jail? Welcome back, everyone, to episode 28 of the Coconut Curry podcast. On this episode, we are going to discuss March Madness, both the men's and women's side of the tournament just recently wrapped up. We're also going to be discussing the NBA drama, NBA chaos, and team standings heading into the playoffs because right now, the play-in tournament, all those seedings are very much alive. It's getting very exciting. Before we do that, if you're new around here, we are three college students at the University of Pittsburgh. I'm Justin. We have Raj on today. Unfortunately, Peter was not able to join us. Maybe he'll make a guest appearance later. Um, and we're on all platforms, video on YouTube, uh, Apple, and Spotify for audio only. Um, we're just chatting about sports, hopefully offering a fresh new perspective on things. So please like, comment, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. Um, if you have been watching for a little bit, you may have known that the context has been lacking a little bit, um, whether that be audio, video problems, or just weeks off. Just anything. At hopefully this point. at this point, it's all situated. We had some audio issues a couple weeks ago. <laughs> had to take last week off. We were in Nashville the other week before that. So more consistency coming at you soon, um, especially mm-hmm. as we get into NBA playoff season. Um, NFL draft is coming up soon. He's back. <laughs> Troel Embiid. Uh, I'm so happy. Six game win streak. Let's go. It's great. Um, we usually react to comments as the first segment of our shows, but we have none to react to just because content is lacking for technical issues. But our favorite segment, disgruntled moment of the week mm-hmm. is here. So Raj, I want to kick it to you. What has made you dissatisfied or angry this week? So on Tuesday, me, Justin, and one of our other friends, well, my girlfriend now, <laughs> forgot I could say that now. Flipping that. <laughs> that was bad, but still, um, we decided to go on a walk, and um, I'm notorious for driving everywhere because I despise walking. I feel like it makes it, I need extra time, and I'm very lazy, so I drive everywhere, and we went, it was like nice weather, like, don't, I like, I enjoy walking sometimes, but other times about that. <laughs> it depends like if like if we're like chatting about stuff and whatever walking's enjoyable not when you have to walk uphill my no. calves hurt my legs hurt i was dying to be fair you're not built to walk i'm not built to walk short stubby legs <laughs> I, I my feet reach the pedals much easier than walking up the hill so <laughs> anyway i mean i don't hate walking but like some days i'd rather just preferable drive. not to walk yes because we walked far it's actually really funny that you hate to walk because your house is so far away from campus. Well, like, that's why I drive everywhere. Yeah, because it's so far. But I'm saying like you would think with how much you hate walking, it would just be like closer to everything. Mm-hmm. Like your apart your on campus apartment your second year was really far away from campus. Your house now <laughs> is really far away from campus. And you hate walking, so <laughs> you're like reliant on the car. Well, you save a little money on rent by living a little further. I guess that gets offset with my gas prices because I drive everywhere, but yeah. I feel like the gas prices for driving so short here it's, yeah it's not that bad especially your junior and senior year mm-hmm. like i'm other people watching might know this like you just don't go into class yeah, as much like classes exactly. tend to be one day a week mm-hmm. or we're, we're at work or, not or taking a full credit schedule yeah <laughs> okay <laughs> might not want that on tape <laughs> it's okay whatever <laughs> send me please <laughs> um my disgruntled moment of the week is the philadelphia philly so we have not talked about it um opening day opening week of baseball has concluded and Raj and I both being Phillies fans, I definitely think since the uh, World Series a couple years ago, we've gotten more into it. Mm-hmm. I've watched almost every Phillies game this season, but my God, did they drive me up the wall. So granted, we are six and six at, at this moment in time. A game just wrapped up earlier mm-hmm. today. We were recording Wednesday. Um, so that's okay. That's all good. But this team, I swear to God, they cannot hit the baseball nope. at all. Look, the strength of the team is supposed to be hitting the baseball. Kyle Schwarber is a DH. It's a lot of home runs hit a lot last year. Um, even though his batting average was terrible. Nick Castellanos, notoriously good hitter. JT, Bryce, Alec Bohm, Tyson Stai, who batted 300 last year. Trey Turner, who batted like 330 one year when he was with the Dodgers. Like all great hitters. They are constantly striking out, runners in scoring position, ground out, mm-hmm. double play turned. Like it is drives me up the wall because we've lost some of these games too. And our, 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 there was a stat out there after our first like 10 games that our starting pitchers were had like a 1.65 mm-hmm. ERA absurd and the Phillies were like four and five in those in, in those games because they can't actually hit the yeah. baseball at all we can't give run support to anyone on our team and like even today I think we had bases loaded and then Schwarber bases out. loaded or like two runners on one out Schwarber strikes out Trey Turner strikes out grounds out whatever yeah. innings over it's like mind-boggling how bad this team can be sometimes at 
like doing these things. Like it drives me up the wall. And you got these all these other teams in the league. Oh, we've got we've got him joining. He spawned. He spawned in. I love setting alarms for AM instead of PM. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway, can't stand the Phillies. Short season, it's 162 games. It is. We are in game 12, and I am pissed off, angry. Johan Rojas should go be sent down to AAA. He can't hit a baseball. I'm honestly confident. Like Sometimes you watch baseball players who can't hit the ball, and like, you try to think to yourself, like, listen, like I try not to like think that I can be better than pros. But when you bat like 4%, so 0.04, I go, I could stand up there and just guess and get 4%, I think. Like I, it's almost like I wonder if like if you try too hard at a certain point because like I could stand there and just like close my eyes and just try to like swing and maybe I'd get lucky and that you could would throw a bunt down you could like, yeah. just like throw your yeah bat in and front just of get lucky yeah. or if I batted zero percent like what's really the difference like yeah. sometimes these people batting are double negatives they'll they'll like ground out into a double play whereas like I would just at least strike out like I'm a guaranteed out but I'm not gonna guarantee two outs because I'm not gonna make contact. Um, and by any chance, like something happens, like a wild pitch or anything, I could run and maybe get lucky. Like, I don't know. Some of these bad, like, I'm like, ah, I feel like we have too long of a leash here. Johan Rojas, like he laid a couple hits down recently, but God, this guy's terrible. I so. think he's heating up right now. Who knows? I mean, he got a hit today. He went three where, for four. The he got a hit night. today though, where like, it's like one of those hits where like you hit it and it kind of just like lofts over mm -hmm. like a weak hit over like a shortstop and second base drops in right before the center fielder. And you're like, Wow, that was a soft ass hit. <laughs> yeah, that's or the true. one that like you like hit to third base and they like, kind of like bobbled a little bit and they had the throw too late and you're like, mm. that's not really a hit, <laughs> but it gets counted as a hit because it's not technically an error. And I'm like, does that really count? Like, no. So Ro Johan Rojas, you need to get sent down to AAA, get your confidence back. <laughs> I don't want to be that guy, Christ. but like, <laughs> there's other players who can take your spot. Like, you are not an MLB player right now. Because what the, I apologize. The, the bad thing is, Pache could just be picked up or traded or whatever. Yeah, which is yeah. not a good thing for us if he's gone. Like, listen, I don't like to be that. Like, I don't like to like put other people down. But, but. when you're batting that bad, like even Castellanos, who's had a terrible this is a baseball rant now, he's had a terrible <laughs> oh, start to the season. Like he's still batting at least twelve percent. Oh, he did hit a homer during the earthquake. Though. He no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Did he not? No, he no. Oh, I got baited. That yeah, I was the paid. Um, he's at least batting twelve percent. Like, and he's having a bad start. Yo, like he's having a bad start. Rojas hit one ball during the entire Diamondback series. First six, twelve games has hit like three balls. This is like now we've got a big enough sample size to know this guy is not good at baseball. Well, specifically batting, but you know what? That's fifty percent of baseball. You can't be bad at fifty percent of the sport. That's like a basketball player who can play no defense. And you're like, well, he's a really good guy on offense. He's like, yeah, but he's like a liability defensively. You know who it's, that is? Duncan Robinson. You know who yeah. never plays in the playoffs? Duncan Robinson. If there's a difference between being bad at a certain aspect of a sport and being an actual liability to your team. Yes. On, you could be yeah. serviceable. Yeah. You could be like fine batting like what? You could, you could be batting like 200. Like not good, but you can at least get on base mm -hmm. a decent amount. This dude's like actually batting into double plays and like losing them games. It's I almost equate it to the reason they took the pitchers out of batting was because it was bad for the sport. It was because just a liability. Because yeah. everyone just goes up. They don't they don't have competitive at bats. They don't practice batting. It's just a waste of time, injury risk, whatever. That's why they got rid of pitchers hitting the ball. Mm -hmm. But when you have someone like Rohan Rojas, who's on the Phillies right now, batting in the ninth hole, it is the equivalent of having a pitcher bat. Yeah. yeah. You're going back to having a liability you're you as you're not. Instead of having a DH, you have another Yes, no, it's so bad. Like it's <laughs> yeah. like adding another pitcher onto our lineup. Now listen, he might get better. I'm not I don't think he's gonna bat 0 0.04. He's probably up to 0 0.07 or 8 now. That's insane. He, he's not going to bat that the entire season, but am I confident he's gonna get to uh like 20% to 0 0.200? Not at all. I'm not confident in the slightest. So yeah. that's my disgruntled moment of no, the week. He's he's up. 0. 0.161 right now. 0. 0.161. Yeah. Okay, so he's up to 16%. Yeah. Still bad. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. a short. It's a short season, and yeah. I'm gonna tell you the hit he got today was a joke. And he laid down a bunt yesterday that got him a hit. So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like you know what? If you just if you just cannot bat for the life, you throw down some bunts. Yep. See what happens. Something, and he's fast, so that helps. Oh, and his on base percentage is terrible too. Yes, because he's not two, good. Three, five. <laughs> yeah. So I love the Phillies. I'm really frustrated by the start they're having to the season. So that's why I'm disgruntled. Peter. Welcome back to the pod. Thank you. Um, I love setting my alarm for 4.30 in the afternoon because I wanted to take a quick nap after my classes of like 
30 minutes and it turns out i said for 4 30 in the morning <laughs> and uh just brutal and uh, oh boy it's uh it's six o'clock right now <laughs> it is not that time we've all been there yeah so uh a little bit of a rough start to the, the, pod, the but... worst is when you said it for night when you're supposed to wake up in the morning like 9 a.m and you use it 9 p.m like, yeah and you're actually like late something you're like oh there goes work oh my god that I I've, I've done that to myself once, but my internal clock has given me enough anxiety that I will wake up without the alarm now. Yep, and I'll just like look at it, and I'm like, I was the, I, this happened to me another time where I because like I always like make sure to like double check my alarm, whatever, and of course I set up like a PM instead of AM, so it's like. 7 30 and i have to get to work at eight and i'm like <laughs> there is one bus i can catch and it is five minutes away from me right now i sprint to this goddamn bus to get there but i was able to make it thank god um also side note raj looks like a priest during he, easter right he now. does i don't know if this has been commented on yet but it has not been actually we just ignored it yeah he looks like a he looks like a priest from like a more progressive yes. church right here like very giving very lent yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, the purple and the white. Like this is this is in character. There we go. Yeah, I didn't uh, know you converted. What do priests say? Well, basically, they just Amen. go. Up, they talk about Jesus for a little bit. Mm. Somebody reads a story. Okay, and then the they priest, break bread. They break bread. The priest also has what's called a homily, which is basically just like a five minute stand up routine that the priest <laughs> does, and they try to like make jokes. And then sometimes they land, sometimes they sometimes don't. Sometimes it lands, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and then they're like. Be good people. Bye. I was at a track meet this weekend. And somebody okay. was telling me about the time that their priest did a homily and was trying to like use God's plan. I no, know, I think it was released in 2016. I think it's when it, God's plan no. came out, and oh, so no. he tried to use God's plan, dude. like the song from Drake, as like a way to. This dude was. I can <laughs> smell how right the white this yeah. dude is. <laughs> He's trying to communicate with like everybody, like the the young kids at the time, and he just said that oh. this was like the worst like homily ever given in his entire life. Yeah. Same like Drake. It's like like, like like Drake said, guys, it's God's plan. It's like oh. Uh, 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 uh. the uh the pastor at my uh my church that i went to in my hometown uh he was a jets fan so oh he boy. would always leave his homily and we pray for the jets <laughs> <laughs> they never walk yeah. prayer didn't work in there buddy <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> the jets need more than a prayer it was so funny. yeah god's plan was 2018 i sorry yeah. i gotta fact check myself that's on that. still six years ago though yeah it's that's crazy but yeah uh Back on back on schedule. Anyway, I was mention, I was going to mention when I was jet lagged coming back from India last summer and I had work. I like tried to do a, a, a nap. Um, so I was yep. doing like sometimes yep. I get back at like five, take a nap to, to six, to whatever, jet lag. to just like get some rest, whatever. Then one day when I was supposed to wake up at like six thirty for work, mm-hmm. I accidentally set my six p.m. alarm and no. I just like woke up at ten and just texted my boss and I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like I'm coming in yeah. now. <laughs> Please don't fire me. <laughs> Um, just and now I have like the worst anxiety where I'm like 20 different alarms. Oh my god! An alarm set so on my bad. an alarm set, like, especially when you're like going on to work on like five hours of sleep. It's like I have my home pod alarm on, my phone <laughs> alarm on. I have an alarm on my watch that will like buzz and everything. <laughs> And usually I wake up on the first alarm and then I have to turn everything off yes, in the morning. It just sounds like an air raid going off. <laughs> and I'm like yelling at the home pod. I'm like, please turn Shut off your alarm. Go to my watch. Like 20 different alarms down <laughs> yeah. on my phone. I'm like, please all turn off. Like I swear to God, I'm awake. I need to like improve this for like when I go off to medical school. Dude, and, like oh I need Lord. to like limit it to like three alarms yeah, or something. Like it's, it back. So like anytime I set an alarm now, it's like 90 alarms. <laughs> and I'm like, this is, we've got to be better at this. we got to be better. we got to be better than that. <laughs> Oh Christ! <laughs> anyway, that's this gruntled moment of the week. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. Um, really took some detours there, but <laughs> oh, I liked what we did with that segment. Um, <laughs> anyway, moving on to March Madness. Um, both sides of the tournament, as I mentioned, have wrapped yes. up. We're going to start with the women's side of things. South Carolina, unfortunately, completes the undefeated season. And the reason I said unfortunately is I hate when like one team is just extremely dominant, and like it's to a boring. point where you can't do anything about it. It reminds yeah. me of the Golden State Warriors with Kevin Durant, where South Carolina, like. People be like, oh, they didn't win last year. How they that dominant? They are in the last two seasons. They have not lost a game besides the game that they lost to Caitlin Clark. They they're yeah. like eighty two and one in their last like eighty three games. I think they are. I think that's like they're one hundred and sixty one and three. In the past, I believe like, it. Two years. It's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. And Don Staley, coach of South Carolina, deserves all the credit. The girls on the oh, team deserve all the credit for yeah, playing great basketball. Clear. South Carolina is a ridiculously good basketball team. But God, I wish there was some like parody on yeah. like in, yeah. in terms of who can actually win. Um, yeah. because 
South Carolina was six and a half point favorites going into the game. They won by how much? They like won nine or ten. Yeah, they won by. They covered the spread. Never a doubt all year for them. And so, congratulations to them. But I wish that some women's programs could start recruiting at the level that South Carolina can, or they can pull some of those recruits because it is kind of like this is the problem where the women's side of the bracket tends to be a lot more predictable because the top heavy teams are very top heavy, mm-hmm. and South Carolina just wins every year. Yeah. Um, Iowa finishes second for the second straight year in a row. Caitlin Clark never did get the ring. Oh, nope. No. But it was a tournament run last yeah, two years, but specifically ages, this yeah. year for the ages. Um, I remember that. I watched the, excuse me, the LSU game. She has 41 in that game. Just ridiculous. She was just pulling up from anywhere. Yep. Yeah. Uh, she was, wh- who was the girl on Haley LSU? Van Lith. Haley Van Lith. <laughs> she was yeah, getting she cooked. Was, yeah, dude. Uh, I will say, what's some of my favorite memes that have been coming out recently, it's like, you know women's basketball is on the come up now when they have people bashing like girls on Twitter uh, that they're terrible at basketball. <laughs> You're old, right. Old heads coming in and bashing about the new generation of women coming up and people dropping the craziest takes you have ever seen in your life about women's basketball. I, and I'm so happy for women's basketball. It's actually really funny because everybody like now is suddenly like I, this happens in sports media when things are popular, people talk about it, but it's like now suddenly everyone's like giving takes on, I guess we're doing it, but like yeah. giving takes on women's basketball. And it's like, Y'all didn't talk about women basketball for the last three years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like everybody wants to talk about it now. Yeah. Um, but, but it's really good. It's really positive. Um, Caitlin Clark obviously has done a lot for the women's basketball mm-hmm. game. Huge amount. Of, yeah. Um, but it's really on, in my opinion, like this next group of women that play next year to really keep it going. Like Paige Beckers, uh, Juju Watson. Yeah. Um, like they need to continue what's going on yeah. here because mm-hmm. this could fizzle out quickly mm-hmm. like, yeah. if you don't have. If you don't have a lot of good name, good names, good players coming mm-hmm. through and performing, it's like Kaylin's going to the WNBA mm-hmm. and she's already doing crazy numbers. I don't know if people have like read the stories. Like if you go look at an Indiana Fever game against your hometown WNBA team, the ticket prices are going to be about twenty percent higher than just to watch Kaylin Clark, just because people want to go and watch Kaylin Clark. And like low key, like I don't blame them. Yeah, I would if That'd I be awesome. If Philadelphia had a WNBA if team, Pittsburgh had a mm-hmm. WNBA team. I would like, be like, let me see if I can get tickets to go yeah, see the, yeah. the uh, Indiana Fever game. That's where she's going to get drafted. So it's just been really cool to see. Like, I feel like mm-hmm. in this is there's a couple of sports moments where this has happened. I was a little bit young when LeBron was winning his championships. This is one of the first times I feel like I've witnessed like a generational player mm-hmm. in their prime just like change the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like it, it could be 20 years later where women's basketball is extremely popular. The WNBA is doing great, and I'm gonna yeah. be like. Well, actually, I was I was around I was, and I watched Caitlin happen. Clark in yeah. college when she like really changed the sport. Yeah, and I think that's really cool. I don't know if there's oh, been so any cool. other athletes during our time. Well, I mean, Wembenyama is probably going to do. <laughs> yeah, it. he might. Yeah, but he's still like just because he, he's what twenty. Like, well, what's interesting about yeah. basketball is Michael Jordan, and LeBron James have set the bar so high mm-hmm. that like Giannis, we thought that could have been Giannis. Mm-hmm. We thought yeah. this could be Luca. Mm-hmm. Those guys have not lived into that, like living mm-hmm. up to that expectation. There's still time, obviously. Yeah. But it's like, yeah, Wemby's a, a, a guy that could do it. Like even T- Tiger Woods did it for golf, but I was still young when Tiger Woods was. Doing yeah, it we for were golf. we were still young. It was like early two thousand, so we didn't really like understand what was happening. Yeah. But t- uh, Tiger Woods is another one of those guys where it's like, you know, he always wore the red Nike polo. He got sponsored by Nike. Like, yeah, of course, was, he was a black golf athlete, which exactly, was like breaking down that barrier, huge barrier to break down, especially with like the, like the socioeconomic implications of all that. Like it was huge, but we were also like. Still Seven playing with like Sky. Down. We were just playing with like Skylanders yeah. and stuff. Like we were not paying attention to what was oh, going Sky on in call. The Skylander yeah. pull is crazy. Oh my yeah, God. I know. <laughs> but um, so I'm I'm very excited to see what happens from the WNBA side of things. Um, it's very like you can tell people feel the moment because the WNBA is tweeting about the game that's yeah. going on. Like you can mm-hmm. see them; they're, they're live tweeting about mm-hmm. how awesome the college game is. You yeah. would never see the NBA tweeting about the Purdue UConn game because they don't no. need that support where the exactly. WNBA is trying to capitalize on mm-hmm. it. And, and I think it's super exciting. What I also think is really cool is like kind of just like the general narrative around like women's basketball, I think is legitimately changing, which is crazy to see in real time because like whenever you would like before, like a couple of years ago when you would like look at like an NBA page or an ESPN and they would post something about women's basketball, it's like, Oh, who cares? Like who cares? Whatever, whatever, whatever. But then you get posts now about players like Caitlin Clark, players like Paige, I forget his last name. Deckers. Deckers. Um, and Angel like, Reese, the well, villain herself. According to the Washington so now. But whatever. Um, but <laughs> you, let's talk about the Washington Post. <laughs> well, we'll get into a lot of that. But what I'm saying now is like you can still get those detractors that are like, oh, they couldn't do it. But then you get like 
actual like basketball fans that are like dude shut up like yeah this is like they have such obvious and like tangible talent that you can see where it's like it would translate almost directly into a men's game where like you can just watch how caitlin clark shoots mm-hmm. it's ridiculous and it's like i can't do that that's crazy unless and this is piggybacked off of like Sabrina Inescu doing this three yes. point shooting challenge. Mm-hmm. Oh, she was like keeping up with him. And she was yeah. keeping up with him. She was shooting from the NBA line. The only thing she changed was the women's ball, obviously, because she practiced ball and, yeah. with it her entire life. So obviously, exactly. She with that. And so, like, you kind of have these narratives stacking, like, right? What would a Caitlin Clark, uh, Steph Curry, WNBA, sh- like, NBA crossover shoot? Yeah. Like, what would that look like? What about a Sabrina? And Caitlin Clark yeah, versus like, Stefan Dame. Exactly. The NBA yeah. all, like, what does that do for the women's game? What are those mm-hmm. numbers? That yeah. Because that was the coolest part of All Star Weekend. We yeah. all said was like seeing that, like that shoot off happen. And now you add Caitlin Clark, who Caitlin Clark is a Steph Curry comp. You watch yeah. how yeah. she plays basketball, mm-hmm. and it's an easy comp to make, but it's the, the accurate comp. She mm-hmm. like moves like Steph. She's running around the court like crazy. Um, so it's just super cool to see in real time. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and of course, UConn gave him a great run. They were doing everything possible to try to stop her. Yeah. Including um, throwing a moving screen at the end yeah, where yeah. everybody started crying. Yeah. You can't make that okay. cool. We, I want to do a, a quick thing on this. <laughs> there, When we see fouls at the end of games, this happens in the NFL, NBA, any sport. Mm-hmm. When you see fouls at the end of games that are actual fouls and you say you can't call that in that situation. I understand what you're saying. That has happened all game. They didn't call it. But it doesn't change the fact that it's still a foul in the moment. Mm-hmm. If I stole from CVS for every day of the week for the last six days, and then on the seventh day I got caught, and I was like, you can't arrest me now. I've like, been doing, I've this, been for doing so this for six days. Like, <laughs> yeah. You can't arrest me. It's like, it doesn't change the fact that in that exact moment, it, is was, a foul, yeah. it was still illegal. Like yeah. I still <laughs> stole from the store. Um. It doesn't matter if it was chippy. That, like I've stole like a car from a car dealership yeah. before, and this time I got just caught stealing. Like it's, it's still illegal. <laughs> it's like it's still illegal. <laughs> it's still not allowed. So yeah. I don't understand this narrative of like I don't like that call in that moment. It's like how about you just set an actual screen, and then people are pulling up 2016 Warriors Andrew Bogut triple screening <laughs> yeah. guys against the like, Cleveland. Yes, guys. that also was. It, it, it was a foul. It didn't get called, and it was 2016 Finals in the NBA. Like. We're not even talking about a like comp remotely here. the same the thing. Officiary, officiating crew isn't the same thing. Like, yeah. I've seen moving like they didn't call this a moving screen. It's like this is not even like we're not even kill, like this. Twenty twenty four versus <laughs> yeah. twenty sixteen. It's a different officiating crew. It's a different basketball league. <laughs> yeah. It's a, a different genders. So like, yeah. like I don't know. Like what are we doing here? Maybe like, don't throw a moving screen. Yeah. To- Raj, <laughs> stop talking with intelligence. All right. Because also, side note, off of that, Raj. They didn't. She didn't need to set a moving screen. It was a tie game. You don't need to shoot the three, so you don't need to extend that far. You just needed to close the gap just a little bit and get in their way to then let Paige go to the rim. But it was the most moving screen ever. Yeah, like you can, you, can, <laughs> you, you can't make the claim that it wasn't a moving screen. So it's like, okay, it wasn't a moving screen. I just don't like that it was called in that tight situation. Fine, Fine. you can be upset that you didn't get to see the outcome of the play but don't start being like i don't like the call like that call in that situation and be like they shouldn't have called that it's illegal like you can't like don't set the moving yeah. screen if you don't want to get called for a moving screen Draw up a better play work on your fundamentals exactly. set your like, goddamn feet and stand yes. still and also like you're coming out of a timeout where like the number one thing a coach should be saying and maybe the coach did like, say it was do like, not mess dude, up like, your job is to stand still and don't yeah. set a moving screen like that you're yeah. a key part of the play if you set a moving screen the play is dead we lose the game oh, god so like i i just i hate it happens <laughs> all of like it's like even like the eagle super bowl it's yeah. like the idea of the james bradbury yeah. hold it's yeah. like i don't like them calling a hold on james bradbury in situation well, you can't hold them. Like it's still, yeah, it's still like, a foul. Like, is it a ticky tack foul? Yes, but you like it objectively was a foul. Yeah, like, I'm over it. 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 You, you, James Bradbury. Oh, I hate it. you. I'm over it. I'm over it. I'm over it. It's all right, buddy. It's all right. It's you all right. cost the city a parade. <laughs> Cost Jason Kelsey another ring. I know. Anybody else uh, have anything to say about the women's side of the tournament? I like women's basketball. Yeah, it was fun, fun to watch. Cool. I liked the LSU game. Caitlin that was, Clark was yeah. chirping. She was. Oh my god, that was so good. And I think the Washington Post like smear like piece on um 
Kim Mulkey. Yeah, yeah. Kim Mulkey. I thought that just added fuel to that the fire. So funny. So funny. Um, <laughs> they said that LSG versus UCLA was good versus evil. Yeah, yeah that, was <laughs> that was the yeah. most biased thing I've ever seen. They called well, the LSU so players like dirty debutantes or something. They did. That was they, nuts. Yeah, that's actually the exact quote. Um, the Washington Post article was so out of pocket. If you have not had an opportunity to read it, I would it's recommend hilarious. you. Hilarious. I would recommend you read it because it, it's an article rooted in probably racism and like classism, and it's a whole entire like it's a whole thing bad read. But if you want to see what bad journalism looks like, you can go. That's- that post. Like, textbook 101 how did this get printed yeah um <laughs> and insane. what's weird about the whole thing is like washington post writer came out afterwards and was like yeah i probably was like a little bit biased when i wrote this and it was like you, you think, think? <laughs> <laughs> it's absolutely it was and what's so funny is that like Obviously, sports media was clearly trying to then also push this kind of like mm. hot topic where they kept trying to pit Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark against each other <laughs> when they both literally have said, no, like we're just competitors. Yeah. Like, what's wrong with you guys? Yep. Like they've said so many times where it's like, oh, well, Angel Reese is getting in her face and is showboating in front of her about that. And then Caitlin Clark's walking off the court and doesn't care at yep. all <laughs> because that's what competitors do. And then. As, like during the LSU game this year, Caleb Clark has turned to the crowd saying they can't f- guard me, <laughs> like firing everybody up. And then Adrian Reese is just like, yeah, you can't <laughs> yeah. Like, throw it on the shoulders. Like, right, just, nothing they made that one thing. Right. Like, <laughs> man, let's just look. Yeah, like, all right. What like, can I do? do yep. Because that's what competitors do. People in the NBA, NFL, they all do this. Stop making this a bigger deal than it is. And you want to know what's going to be fun? Angel Reese is going to go to the NBA, the WNBA next and year. we're going to have beef. And they're, they're it's going to be good. Unless they're teammates. No, they won't be. They won't be. Indiana Fever don't have a top 10 pick. Yeah, uh, again, after besides the first pick. Never um, But like, is it a great opportunity for an Angel Reese, Caitlin Clark, WNBA game? This is mm-hmm. our Larry Bird versus Magic Johnson. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> this is that, it. That's crazy. <laughs> um, what's actually funny is like Angel Reese is like, the way the media has talked about her would like make you think that she's going to be like a, t- a second or third overall pick in the WNBA. She's not. She's not. I think she's projected yeah. at seven right now. Like yeah. she's actually not that skilled of a basketball player. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's just really funny because they're like they'll commit the, the Angel the, Reese, Caitlin Clark. It's like Caitlin Clark's on a whole different like planet than where yeah. Angel Reese is right now. And that's not to slander Angel Reese at all. No, it's she's just, still like, a very good player. It's just like, funny that they draw these comps up, and it's and just then, like. My favorite comments are like Angel Reese one ring, Caitlin Clark zero. Angel better than um Caitlin Clark, and I'm yeah, like, like, okay, here uh, we go. But um, that's how we know that we're exactly yep. on the cover because people make stupid ass arguments in comment sections yeah. about how good players are. It's up, and it's also it's just a shame like the Washington Post article like. Oh yeah women's basketball is on the up and then you have like an article coming just out just meant to tear down. down the sport yeah mm-hmm. and it's like this is the this is the time to promote the sport to yeah. bring the sport like up and the you obviously saw last year with the shoot, shoot like this year with the shootout uh competition at all-star break like mm-hmm. now's the time to promote the sport yeah now's the time to like get it more popularity um and it's a shame that like somebody from the Washington Post decided just to write write that. Which also, like Kim Mulkey does have some very questionable outs out of side of basketball takes and stuff yeah. like that, which could be criticized. She was at January six. That's what I was trying yeah. to. Yeah. So there's some, vi- and also at one point she there's some claims that she might have been homophobic at one point. So like she's not a like again these are all allegations accusations we don't know anything whatever. So there are things that journalists could have been looking into about that of like take an objective stance but to then look at just like the lsu players that has nothing to do with her and be like yeah they're terrible people it's like what what did they do dirty debutants like how, you're calling 18 to 23 year olds dirty yeah. debutants like like and, is and, it because flasher johnson's a rapper like, like I'm what do you want <laughs> and that's like i think that's like the big problem there it's mm-hmm. like not only are you saying things you shouldn't be saying about um athletes not only are you saying things about athletes in a sport that needs to be promoted right now you're saying this about 20 year olds yeah. who are like, like these, especially the, for the women's side of things, like they are funding their education through this because they don't have like a, a big earning potential mm-hmm. in the yeah. WNBA. Not like the NBA where these guys are going to be two play- years done, go to the NBA. Their first contract is going to be a million dollars. They'll have a brand deal or two mm-hmm. and then they'll be set for life. Like the women who go to the WNBA are like your business person salary who's yeah. just living like not living paycheck to paycheck necessarily but it's not they, they a still crazy have to work paycheck for, yeah. Yeah. i want you to guess the highest salary in the WNBA right now it's probably like 1.2 million the highest is 240 241 guess year? the per year but get get the get, guess the average the average is gonna be like 77 147 
Okay. 147. Okay. That's actually a good average. Wow. It's, it's gone up definitely. Yeah. It's gone up, but compared yeah. to like the NBA and the bigger yeah, markets, well, yeah, it's yeah, so let's say so let's say you are a one hundred and forty thousand dollar pick. Like you're living comfortably after a few yes, years. Yes, you're absolutely living, living comfortably like and everything. But, but like directly, like you're legitimately like working for you can't just like not work under yeah. that salary. Yeah. And so the fact that you're like take like trying to tear down these women who yeah. are going to go into a sport where they're not making that much money is just like like come on, it's a shame. What are we doing? It's a shame. Anyway. Um. Anyway, men's side of things, Boring. UConn, UConn goes wins, back to back. Whatever. I actually thought it was a great tournament. I wish I bet on UConn spread every game. I feel like it was the initial part of the tournament was so absolutely mm-hmm. insane, and then NC State had this crazy run. But then for UConn to win it, it at just, the end, it's yeah, like I think the result. What? So I, I think we talked about this on our last episode mm-hmm. about how it's good, and we were talking about this with our friends too. Mm-hmm. It is nice when. Like there's upsets, but you don't want to see a situation like last year was terrible. Oh, yeah. having I mean, obviously UConn won last year and they were four seed, but having a four seed UConn, five seed San Diego State in the final with a FAU eight seed and a Miami five seed in the final mm-hmm. four, that's not good for the sport. Yeah. Having these random teams people don't know about and don't have like a legacy to them making the final four. Viewers were down horrendous last year. Um, nobody was interested in the tournament. It's fun to have the upsets early, and that's what this tournament had. They had mm-hmm. a few upsets: Yale beating Auburn, yeah, um, Kentucky going down to Oakland. The legend of yeah. Jack Golkey, NC State obviously make a run. But I thought it was perfect. Mm-hmm. You had one seed, one seed in the final. It was a great game in the first half, um, and then you had, and then they just went okay. You four seed Alabama, you could score. <laughs> you had four seed Alabama make a little bit of yeah. run to the final four. Mm-hmm. That was good. You beat up one seed like that little upset, and then you have a a true Cinderella. NC, NC State up State through it pretty far, yeah. Yeah, and like I thought that all came together very nicely. Where I liked seeing a one for eleven and then, one, yeah. and then having that come into a one on one. I think Zach Eady versus uh, the entirety of UConn. Gosh, why is his name escaping oh. me right now? Clinging, a uh, clinging. Yeah. Um, like I forget his first name though, and it's bothering me. Um, but having that be like a matchup that start like that was a star yeah. matchup for the game. Like that's super cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Donovan. Donovan. Yeah, Donovan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. So that was just, I thought that was super cool. Um, Zach Eady does come up a bit short. Two uh, Naismith players of the year. Um, no ring yep. the show for it. But it was a good comeback from their a brutal tournament mm-hmm. appearance last year. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Because, yeah. like, you know, you made it to the finals. Like, they still proved that, like, they were a great team. But I think there there's just genuinely levels to how good UConn mm-hmm. was. Because, like, that team, Purdue ran through Zach Eady. And once UConn realized, okay, we'll just let him score. We can outscore as a team just Zach Eady and just shut everybody else mm-hmm. down. That was game. And yeah. that's what FDU did last year. And that's how they beat that's them. That's how they beat mm-hmm. them. They let, they're like, okay, we'll let Eady do everything. We're just going to lock down everyone else. And, and we're just going to be chucking up threes yeah. and just be playing good defense and really forcing this game. Yeah, and they and, and listen, Purdue, like, even though they kind of got blown out at the end of that game, I think we can't take away from how great they still had a good tournament run. Mm-hmm. Um, they survived a Dalton Connect crazy game against Tennessee. Mm-hmm. True. Um, they had a hard path. Listen, they had to play obviously 16. Then they played five seed Gonzaga. A lot of people thought that was going to be a matchup they lost. They came and played two Tennessee. Mm-hmm. They had to play at NC State, sure. Um, NC, State NC State gave them a game too at some point. Yeah, but like, uh, let's not forget, like NC State also had a tough tournament run. They won yeah. the ACC tournament. They, they beat a won. bunch of good teams like Marquette. Yeah, they mm-hmm. beat Duke. Like this isn't a this was not a, a true eleven seed. Yeah. Um. So they had a tough go against it, and they ran into a team in UConn who is they are a pro team. When you watch some of the concepts yeah. they run on offense, like it it's is like insane. NBA concepts mm-hmm. where a lot of times you're like, oh, you try to see a player go into the post, people run around a little bit, shoot a bad jump shot, whatever, get back. That's a lot of college basketball. UConn's actually running like plays and designs, especially like. After watching like Le- uh, JJ Redick and LeBron's new podcast, I'm like looking they're, at yeah. things in the corner. I'm like, oh, they're running these concepts. Um, yeah. They have a really good big man there. Um, mm-hmm. They have a good history. Their coach is really good. So UConn just dominant start to finish is the highest point differential of any tournament. They yeah. were ridiculous. Like it was just this is they're going to start to model how like to do tournament runs because there was never a doubt in the tournament. Mm-hmm. No, even when they were first close first halves, close first halves were them being up by a few points, yeah. and then they would just create these massive gaps and it was just so impressive they're beating teams by like averaging like 21 points yeah Yeah. something ridiculous like that i think if you uh like double down each time on uconn over on uconn spread yeah yeah. um i think you would win like 200 something thousand dollars that would be from last year's tournament to this last final if you just kept kept doing it yeah i wish it was that easy (laughs) yeah 
and we'll see we'll see what they have next year can they do a three p they're gonna have a lot of players leaving some people going to the draft some people graduating but i mean it, it, it that's the yukon culture there like that I, what's the coach's name there dan hurley yeah he is like you, you can like just tell kind of like his vibe is like he reminds me of like a nick saban a bill belichick mm-hmm. like some of these like all-time great coaches that's just like i don't get who you are you are going to come into my program run my schemes and we're going to run it to the best of our ability and i'm going to make you a champion yeah and i think what he highlighted a lot dan hurley being him highlighted a lot after uh the game like how they recruit players and he's like we're not, not recruiting people who are um prima donnas or anything like that he's like i'm recruiting people who are going to buy into this team exactly we're going to buy into the team vibe and that's how they played like there's you go down the list of people who had their own moments. I mean, they they made it sound like it was a Zach Eady Donovan clinging like competition, like one on one matchup between them. It was but not. it was not. It was Zach Eady dominated that matchup. It was all those other players around UConn, yeah. Spencer, uh, Castle, those guys. Mm-hmm. They really came out and played well. It was a really impressive run and something that I won't forget for a bunch yeah. of years. Being like that was like just UConn start to finish. They were the most picked team by everyone to win the tournament. Same situation as last year. Purdue, highly picked team to win the tournament last year. Mm-hmm. They've lost to the 16th seed in the first round. This year, UConn, highly picked by everyone. It was never a doubt. Yeah. Never, never a doubt. doubt. Rush, can you pull up the box score of the uh, game real quick? Because I think it was because it, it was very clear that like Zach Eady was carrying Purdue. And then if you look they at... They made one three. Ex- yeah. They made one three, which is god awful. Mm-hmm. But then if you look at like... The rest of the team. Look at UConn. Like... It's, Ed thirty seven, Braden Smith, their point guard twelve. Yeah, their guard, their shooting guard, or whoever, whoever. he is, zero. Yeah. their other one five, and their forward four. Yeah, exactly. And, and then, then two then bench points. You look at look UConn, at UConn. Everybody has Newton one. with twenty, Caravan with five, Spencer with eleven, Castle with fifteen, Klingon with eleven. Even their bench, Diara nine. And then four for the other bench players. It's, it's spaced out between a couple different players. Mm-hmm. So that way it's like, okay, this guy has 10. This guy has 11. This guy has five. This guy has... And it's just every single person on the team doing their job yep. to win the game. And it's it was yeah. so impressive. Um, I did want to mention, a lot of people have talked about Zach Eady, how he's not skilled. I hate him. And everything but, like yeah. that. This guy, whether people like it or not, he's going to be drafted. And yeah. He's going to go to the NBA. And honestly, like... He should he should get some love in the draft. Um, what he did, like people have said that Donovan Klingon is like an NBA prospect. People are really looking forward to him being in the draft, and they say he's a better prospect than Zach Eady. Zach Eady just hurt like hung thirty on him. Yeah, he hung thirty on everybody else in the tournament. Yeah, like these guys are going to go to the NBA now. The, NBA, the right now this year's class is not super not, strong, not but. super strong, but this guy is going to go to the NBA and have an impact. Whether he's going to be a thirty minute, he's not going to be a thirty minute a night guy. Can he be a 10 minute? Is he going to be a G League guy? Who knows? We'll see. Obviously, Luca Garza came out of Iowa, um, was a really good center. He won player of the year. He's kind of not that been that relevant in the NBA, but everybody who's been like on this narrative, and I was definitely on this narrative a little bit before, like Zach Eady has no chance in the NBA. Like, if you like, he just had a dominant tournament run where he was, was the best just, player yeah. on the team. Like, he, he is going to have success at the next level. Absolutely. Like, he might not be the centerpiece on a franchise, but he no, will of course absolutely not. be a gr- like, great role player to be able to And, and people got to give him credit. He played every minute of almost every single game that was mm-hmm. close. Um, he played. He sat for, like, 30 seconds in the UConn game. Yeah. Um, he's seven four and ripped. Like he, like he moves around yeah, very like well. Seven four two size, like two eighty five. Like, yeah, something like, like that. Like he's not Wemby, yeah. but who else is Wemby? Yeah, no one's. He's no one is seven Wemby. four guy who, who can get around the basket. He's not that skilled. He's gonna have to learn to branch out his game, but he's gonna have a role in the NBA. That hook shot is disgusting. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> so. Um, I just want to like say that because I think there's this like it's kind of like honestly i feel it's a little bit of a jj mccarthy comp a little bit to football where everyone's like no one really likes the fact that jj mccarthy is going to get drafted that high but you're also like he won he he was good as like a different play styles but like this idea that jj mccarthy everyone's like we don't want to draft him number five overall but he's going to get drafted high overall yeah zach eady is going to get drafted higher than people think he should be because they're just gonna be like he's tall and is no skilled Mm -hmm. but he's going to get drafted high because he performed well exactly so um Shout out to Alabama, four seed takes down yeah. uh, North Carolina. It's a yeah. good job, and yeah. I think the future of men's college basketball is definitely a little all over the place. The draft class this year is horrendous, yeah, it's so um, and right now there's a lot of like older players who are succeeding. And we talked about this a little bit on our last episode, where you don't have Jay Wright said it on 
a show he was like you don't have one and duns who come in like you mm-hmm. think of anthony davis Devin booker these kind of guys yeah um who are like nba people you think about now think about the re- recent people who are succeeding in the nba um they're not like young kids they're not coming from these programs where they're mm-hmm one and done's there like yeah. that that era is over mm-hmm. um so it's really gonna be interesting to see like kind of what college basketball does going forward i mean hell you got people like Pronny james just getting out of the nba yeah. uh, ncaa well, and not yeah, staying yeah. for a couple of years so i maybe. thought he was gonna come to pit and the <laughs> lebron draft begins the LeBron <laughs> draft. yeah we'll definitely talk about that at some point um but any other notes on men's side of things no mm, thanks uconn you made me some money yeah yeah there we Pitt go. got screwed yeah, yeah. should have been in there virginia frauds Shout out the ACC. Shout out yeah. the ACC. They really showed yeah, us more programs. tournament selections. The SEC does not deserve that many. They got yeah. like yes. well, honestly, the SEC did show up. Tennessee uh, had a great showing against Purdue. That was well, a, they showed up eventually. eventually. Yeah, the yeah. SEC they got like I think like eight or nine bids. They got they got destroyed in the first yeah. round or two, and then yeah. like Alabama showing up in the final Their four was top great. Teams deserved yeah. it. Yeah, the the fringe teams did not. No, 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 not at all. Um, there was a lot of questionable that, i mean that's also something college basketball is gonna have to answer like at what point do you want to see your great players like a bub carrington who's now in the mm-hmm. transfer portal like no he's declared no, for he's the draft declared. oh he declared for the draft oh yeah. didn't know that didn't see that um but even if he was in the transfer portal let's just yeah. say or maybe he goes back like you want that guy in, in, in the, the tor- ncaa yeah. tournament yeah. um to make a name for himself and you just don't have that happening mm-hmm. and that's the shame of it all for me with college basketball it's like i understand you love the 16 seeds and the conference wins and whatnot but what benefit does having a um howard a stetson in the tournament do wagner state i think was one of the 16 seeds this year like mm-hmm. what benefit does that have versus getting a team like Pitt in there so you can see some of their players who might actually go into the draft at one point yeah it's um, just tough yeah but we'll see yeah. we'll see it'll be some interesting changes let's uh, expand the let's expand march madness to 340 teams that's it <laughs> yep so that that re- report was so dumb <laughs> Oh, uh, I think uh, did we talk about that last we episode? Did, we yeah. Did, yeah. Go listen. You go back and listen to our last episode. It's titled March Madness. God, that was so infuriating. Like the round of 132. Yeah. Oh my god. So the last thing you need is UConn playing like sub 72 some, seed. Like our pickup team, like you, me, us three, <laughs> yeah. Andres, and Jacob. That's like the equivalent of what UConn's gonna be playing in the first We're round. We're running two power forwards. Yeah. We like, don't have a true center. I'm chucking up half court shots every time. It does not. Like, I mean, that would be the equivalent of like UConn playing. Like Andres is gonna look like Isaiah Thomas. <laughs> if we make a basket, that's it. Honestly, I, I, that's I, a win. I'm five ten and I'm the small forward of the team. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be rough, Cooked. dude. I'm gonna be a monster in the paint. I'm throwing only elbows. I'm falling out. I'm <laughs> falling out. Dude, I'm found out in the first like seven minutes. <laughs> um, doing a big transition to the NBA right now. There's a lot of chaos in the NBA, and I love it because I love NBA chaos. So <laughs> there are so many different playoff combinations right now, and the best way we're going to kind of go through it is I think we're going to go down by teams currently that yeah. are like on the mm-hmm. bubble and just kind of talk about what we think about them, where they're at, and then we can kind of discuss some of those scenarios. So all right, so let's start with the Wizards, <laughs> <laughs> the top team. Don't make me rant about the Wizards yet. <laughs> um. So let's start with the Sixers. All right. So the Sixers what, fringe. Bubble so right now, right now, seven, right? So right now the Sixers are the seven seed. They're yeah. a game out of the six seed, a game out, game and a half out of the four and five seed. Um, Jesus. They are on a six game winning streak since Joel Embiid has come back. And they have games against the Magic left. And then I'll have to pull them up. Our schedule is pretty, the Sixers schedule is pretty weak after. It, it's it like is. Magic. Well, there's only a couple. Granted, all this, again, we're doing this on Wednesday. Mm-hmm um all the games are going to be this all the, there's barely any games left the yeah. sixers play the magic and they play the net and they play the nets and then they're done yeah so there's two Imagine games left. ben simmons steps up and <laughs> ben simmons knocks us into, oh he is yeah. oh we're good um now nah, ben simmons glass shatters dun, 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 dun. so ben simmons <laughs> comes out the tunnel <laughs> there's a there's a lot of things here that can go the sixers way the magic for example have the bucks tonight the sixers and then the Bucks again. The, now Giannis is hurt, and we'll get into the Bucks and all that stuff situation later. Oh but there's a very real possibility here with a little bit of help. The Sixers don't control their own destiny; they need help. Mm-hmm. Um, that they can get up into the six seed and five seed. But that's all hypothetical. Let's talk about the team itself. Where do we see the Sixers going in the playoff run? Like, what what do they need to have happen? Like, I think. I mean, Buddy. We need Buddy Heel to be shooting good. That's the one missing piece we were missing. We never really had a true three-point shooter. Max is our point. Well, when Max was there, I guess he was yeah. shooting guard because 
Harden was taking it up, but now Maxi's running point. Having Buddy Heal there is a good three point shooter as an outlet option all the time because he's been nailing threes all the time. Uh, please bench Tobias. Make <laughs> make him play off. I the thought bench. Tobias Harris was doing well since you chirped him. No, no, he had one good game. One good game. Up. That's yeah. it. Uh, Ricky Council is pretty good at basketball. Yeah, I would. I'll say this about the Sixers. For anybody who's like, there was this whole we talked about this when uh, they were debating if Embiid was going to come back this year. The Sixers are three and a half points, three and a half games out of the second seed. Embiid missed twenty games. Yeah, Embiid and Maxi on the court this year have an eighty percent nearly win percentage. Like this bat, like nobody wants to play this basketball team. They yeah. are going to they are going to win their first round matchup as long as they don't play the Celtics. Yeah, probably. They might win their second round like th- like this idea yeah, out there. Let's not get ahead of ourselves with the second round. I'm still <laughs> scarred. <laughs> like I it drives me up the wall because people are having these debate oh like all this like stuff. The Sixers are three and a half yeah. games out of the second seed. And Bede had a meniscus injury. And Maxi has been out for so many games. Like we had Kelly Oubre and Buddy Heald carrying the team. Yeah, people love to talk about how, oh, well, the West is like so much better than the East when it comes to that because like the depth of the teams. But you get a team like the Sixers, like, yes, the Celtics are far and away yeah. the best team in the East. but By 14 games. By yeah. 14 games. But below that, it's a bloodbath. It's, yeah, it's complete, really close. Like, it's like, the, so this is like the chaos of the East, right? The Bucks are 14 games back of the Celtics. Then the Knicks are one game back of the Bucks. The Magic are two games back of the Bucks. The Magic are one game back of the Knicks. The Cleveland, Cleveland and Orlando have the same exact record. The Pacers are half a game out of the Cavs and Magic. And the only thing they have different is they have one more in the loss category. So that could just be changed tonight. And then the Sixers are a game back of the Pacers. Yeah. And the Heat are half a game back of the Sixers. And then there's the fall off. Like it is a lot could happen here. There's a complete world in which the Orlando Magic end up in the play-in game yeah. because they could lose to the Bucks tonight, the Sixers and the Bucks again. Yeah. yeah. If that happens, which is possible, even if Giannis isn't playing, you could just have the you could have the Magic who currently hold the hold the four seed fall and, all the way to the, to the play-in, play-in game. Yeah. Yeah. And the Sixers could be like a five seed and you yeah. got a matchup with them against like the Pacers or the Cavs, and you're mm-hmm. like, the Sixers are just outright favored. Yeah, yeah, just straight up favored. It's like that could happen all within the next like three days. Yeah. Like it is. They, like this season, I feel like more than in past seasons, it's coming down to the wire. And it, for you know, it's going to be so chaotic mm-hmm. and it's super exciting for like just the Eastern Conference oh, matchups. Yeah. For mm-hmm. example, the Sixers, especially with the Giannis injury, they might be Vegas favorites in every single series. Oh, yeah. They could decide the Celtics series. Yeah, they absolutely could be. Um, if Giannis is like going to be out for one or two games, if, if you haven't heard, he has calf strain. Um, so we don't know how long he'll be out for. He, he's a dog, so we might be able there. But also, they're not, they haven't been a good team with. Giannis with and, without and, him yeah but, anyway yeah. so like the like the Embiid maxi win rate is, is something that I think is really crucial to highlight here they mm-hmm. have won six straight since he's come back like this is a team that you do not, not want to no. see the Pacers Cavs Magic Knicks Bucks they are all teams that are thinking if we lose our last game of the season we might and we could avoid yeah. like yeah. if you're the Bucks and if you lose your last game of the season against the Magic you end up falling to the four but by doing so, you avoid the two seed, which mm-hmm. means you avoid the Sixers if they win the play-in game. You do that. You I lose the you game. Would. Yeah. Why would you? Because why would you want to see Joel Embiid, Tyrese Maxey in the first round versus yeah, seeing see. a team like Cleveland or mm-hmm. Indiana? Yeah. Even though the Bucks and Indiana have some history, like, like they're not they're not bad by any means. Yeah. But it's like you would just much rather mm-hmm. play the worst team in the playoffs. Yeah. Like you don't want to see. Exactly. Do you think the Orlando Magic are going to be happy to see? the Sixers in the first round, the Sixers are going to be favored to win in six. Yeah. Like it won't even be, it might not even be a series. Like it's something that I think is super fascinating having this team um, there right now. So like, I will say this might be the most confident I've been in the Sixers in a while Mm -hmm. because they just win games. And that's the thing. Pound for pound. I will take our like um, support players over most of the teams in the playoffs. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ubre's going crazy. I hope extend him. He belongs in Philly. Mm -hmm. Like even we have Lowry who's I mean, still he's, he's not hard on the eyes either. I know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <All right. laughs> like we have Kyle Lowry, like, you know, solid rotational vet. Mm-hmm. Um, Ricky Council's been playing well. Um, who's the guy we got from the Bucks? Uh, what was his name? Uh Pat Bev? No, 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 no. The guy we traded Pat Bev. Cam Payton, right? Cam Payton, yeah. Yeah, he's been solid off the bench too. And um it's and it, Tobias is our crutch right now, yeah, honestly. Like, like <laughs> well, it's like dare I say I have hope for the Sixers because this is the most well-rounded this team has been in a while. I was and just about to say so we that, say our yeah. crutch is Tobias Harris, but Maxi and Embiid have not played much together because yeah. Ma- Maxi has been having his own injury mm-hmm. issue. If you have start having Kelly, 
um, Embiid, Maxi, Buddy, Kyle Lavery off the bench. You start having this whole like system. DeAnthony Melton just came back yeah. for his first game the other day. Like you start being like, we don't need Tobias. Like the frustration with Tobias was that Embiid was out and he mm-hmm. wouldn't help. He couldn't carry yeah. any like mm-hmm. anything at all. So he wasn't like our standing was mm-hmm. probably could be three or four right now if Harris had showed up a little bit. But you don't need him to show up in a big way you don't. Yeah. when. You have him and be there and playing as good as he is. So. Like we have Kelly Oubre dropping double doubles. Yeah, like I like this is like going from George Niang shooting threes <laughs> to Buddy Hill shooting threes is such a change of pace. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be a fun and they can do a lot of things with their their lineups now, right? Yeah. You can play, you go small, Maxi Melton heel, and you got a lot of spacing mm-hmm. there, a lot of mm-hmm. defense, like some defensive potential, and then play like U- Oubre and Embiid, and you've really got a four out system. Embiid on the inside can play five out there. Or you can kind of make the team a little bit bigger, play Batum, Ubre, and Bead, um, and then play like a Melton and then a Maxi, yeah, or exactly. play Kyle Lowry off the bench, mm-hmm. or you, you can play Tobias. Like I didn't even mention mm-hmm. Tobias in those lineups yeah. yet, and then you play Tobias with a uh, Paul Reed and like kind of run exactly. the bench a little bit more. Like you have a lot of exciting variations for the Sixers. I'm really excited because I think mm-hmm. regardless of the situation, like if they stay in the play-in game, it's going to be a fun first-round game against the Heat. Mm-hmm. And if they lose the game, of course it's going to be like oh. Like win or go home against the uh, Bulls or the Hawks, which that's just going to be yeah. fun in general. Even if we get the Celtics in the first round, like the Celtics are going to be pissed. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I don't think we'll win the series, like the series against them, but Celtics are going to be pissed off if they have to play the Sixers yeah. in the first round. They're going to be like, damn it. Like we got to play and beat again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't, they don't have Horford right now. Exactly. Yeah. I know they, they, have, Horford, oh, no, they don't have Robert Williams. Yes. Um, so like they've got a little bit less potential to deal with that. So like, Ah, just like, it's very exciting. Yeah. Whereas, like before, I felt like this team had kind of like hit a hit a plateau a little bit. You're getting, you're building up and getting this team in the right spot. It needs to be at the right time. Yeah. What matchup do you think is best for the Sixers in the first round? That's reasonable. Like, what? I guess what's the matchup you want to see, and then what's the best case for them? Uh, best case. Well, it also depends on if Giannis comes back. Because I feel like if Giannis doesn't come back, if you play the box, oh you're yeah, them. like because there's there's nobody on that team that's going to be able to guard me. Like, period. Um, I think. Uh, yeah, so I think that would probably be ideal for them. Something I would want. I mean, obviously, we're all going to be hyping up Knicks Sixers because yeah, Nick we, so we want to do that. Even though, the group chat would be crazy. Yeah. The group chat would go crazy, even though Julius Randle is going to be out, which sucks. And I mean, that was kind of like a big, big hit for the mm-hmm. Knicks. I would love to see it because it would just be hilarious. <laughs> um, something oh, I'm trying to think because who... I, I think Sixers playing the Magic would just be a. Blood I was bad. just about to say the Magic was going to Magic be a would be bad. ideal. Yeah. Just to now it's going to be tough to get that matchup because you're looking at the it's, Sixers. They're just like in weird spots. Well, because if the Sixers yeah. beat the Magic, they're going to get a game up on them, and then the yeah. Magic will come down. So maybe it's a, a six three, maybe it's a five four with the Magic. Yeah, um, I think it's a matchup where you just look at the Vegas sports books mm. and just go. Sixers yeah. are just going to win that match. Yeah. Win. But also, I don't really want the Sixers to fall into the 4-5 or five, because that means they have to play the Celtics in the second mm-hmm. round. So, uh, so my ideal seeding for the Sixers is six. I think you would end up with like the Knicks or the Magic, maybe the Cavs, you're playing them. Mm-hmm. That's a good first-round matchup for me. And then you play the Bucks in the second round, which mm-hmm. I think Giannis could be healthy for that series. If they win their first-round matchup against the... It would be the Heat probably at that point. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I'll take the Bucks. Like, they, don't, yeah. they haven't looked good all year. Yeah. And then, God, imagine this was the year we made the Eastern Conference Finals after, after all that, after all <laughs> that, the meniscus injury, the the hope, just be crazy, just it'd be crazy. So I'm I'm very excited about the Sixers. Dare I say I have hope? And we also made a bet with one of our friends who's a Celtics fan that, um, well, I did personally. So if the Sixers beat the Celtics, he has to get a Kyle Lowry Sixers yeah, jersey. Dude, that's an iconic jersey. If the Celtics lose to the um, Sixers in any playoff game, yeah. That's awesome. Series, yep, but wait, any I mean, wait the series series. Oh game. Jesus! Game I was like, like any game. Oh, I was like free. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's a lot on the Sixers mm-hmm. going down. We don't have to talk much about the Celtics. They're far and away the one seed. Yeah, they'll be favored in any mm-hmm. round one series. There's not much going on with them. Two of the Bucks. Chaos. Yeah. Chaos. 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 <laughs> Doc Rivers. Dude, are, we need to see a Doc Rivers versus Sixers matchup. That's are, why I was saying the Bucks. I forgot Doc was on the needed. team. The four. Well, someone talked about this today on a sports show. Um, this is like Doc Rivers loves this. Uh, Giannis is injured. This is a perfect this excuse. Is a perfect excuse. Perfect it's excuse. The biggest scapegoat. He, it's like, he loves making excuses. And then this time he could just be like, I mean, what do you want me to do? What do you, uh, Our player uh, strained his calf. I didn't want him to hurt his Achilles. So we didn't play him in the series. What were we? What were we supposed to get out of the first round without Giannis? Dude. Like, what did you want from us? Giannis. I took the team over in the middle of the year. It was hard. That's exactly what he's going to say. But the, the Bucks are a mess. They're four and six in their last ten. This is with Giannis. They don't have a good like. They are not a good team with Giannis right now. Again, they are. 
in this hunt with all these other teams and they have relatively stayed out of injury problems for a lot of the year. They've just been bad. Like this is yeah. the six or three and a half games back to them only because Embiid missed all this time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they're, they are a team that's in like disarray right now. They're 18 and 20 on the road. <laughs> um, so they, like, they have a lot to prove in this playoff run. And you start to hear the whispers of what do we do? You traded drew holiday who won the championship with you for um, Dame Lillard. Okay. That's not really working out. You cha- got off Mike Budenholzer. You hired Adrian Griffin. You fired him quickly. You fired Terry Stotts before the year started because he wasn't getting along with Adrian Griffin. You fired Adrian Griffin. You bring in Doc Rivers. Doc Rivers is making excuses. You're not really that good of a team. Now Giannis is hurt. It's like, this team's a disaster. Yeah. And they won. we thought they were going to go on a big run after a, you won, win the championship mm-hmm. against yeah. the... Uh, Suns a couple years ago. Yeah. Giannis drops 50 in a game six or game seven. I forget which one it was. Um, six, I think. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, to close out that series, you think, okay, this might be the Bucks' time. Suddenly, I'm like, I, just I don't really it. actually see the future for the Bucks. Yeah. Like, it's like Dame Lillard's getting older. You traded for him. You didn't have a good year this year. You got, you're going to fire another head coach. Like, I think the Dame trade might have been like, it, like hindsight bias, but like looking back at it now, it's like, it's not, it, that Dame trade. Yeah. It's like, what if you did? too much mm-hmm. with the trade like you try to overcomplicate mm-hmm. your team go too much on the star power side of things now this could all be again this is all before the playoffs they might just dominate the playoffs mm-hmm. and get to the yeah Eastern we, Conference we, finals we and Celtics words, and absolutely whatnot but i wouldn't be shocked to see a team like the knicks give them six seven good games yeah because hell yeah. the magic could honestly if they end up in that spot. okay i'm not a magic guy it'd be orlando a- magic <laughs> It'd be a damn shame if Giannis ended up on the Knicks. <laughs> well, let's yeah, talk about the damn Knicks now. Shame. Yeah. Uh, the three seed, um, they're still fighting. They could be the two seed. They could be the sec- six yeah. seed at this point. Um, Very solid going overall. On. Um, of course, the bad news that came yeah. through for Knicks fans is Julius Randle is out for the playoffs. That's yeah. a big blow. I think that kind of like destroys any is, chances. Um, OG and yeah, he's back. He's, he's back. going to be back. Okay. Everybody else is back mm-hmm. besides Julius Randle, okay. which sucks because it's like oh, right. they're the, playing really well right the now. The Villanova Knicks. Exactly. The Villanova <laughs> Knicks are playing so well. Um, and it just like it just sucks because like Randle, as much as New York literally wanted this dude hung and quartered <laughs> last year for being bad in the playoffs. <laughs> He was he really had a bounce back year. He was playing very, very solid. And they kind of needed that kind of bigger depth piece up front. Like because they got some decent big men. Nobody like super notable, but they have like some decent big men up front. They got some great shooters. Ju- uh not Julius Randall. Jalen Brunson is incredible. <laughs> and by the way, the Dallas Mavericks, you are so dumb. I'm sorry. You're literally cavemen for letting him go. But whatever. He was going to take a cheaper deal. You're the dumbest human beings on the planet. Anyway. Um, but like he is performing so well. He had like 45 the other night. It like Josh Hart's playing pretty well. Like Steven Chenzo shooting, shooting well. Like everybody's playing well, and then we just don't have the one guy that kind of brings it all together in Julius yep. Randall, which sucks. But you know, I think they'll be. I think they'll be decent in the playoffs. I don't. I don't think they'll be like super deep. Here's like, where I see this team. They can win a game against the Magic, the Cavs. They can win a series against the Magic, Cavs, Pacers. Maybe they're not going to make it out. The second uh, maybe the Bucks. I just and it. It wouldn't. I would feel the same way with Julius Randle. Maybe I'd say they could make the Eastern Conference Finals with him. Mm-hmm. I just get concerned with the Knicks about how much star potential they have because OG no, nobody's good. He's not a star. Mm-hmm. Jalen Brunson is a star. Is a star. But, He's a star point guard. Yeah, that's and, the thing and he's you small, need. and it, we've had it. Mm-hmm. Steph Curry is the only small point guard that's really been able to like lead their championship team in the last decade. Because like they years. have they have good defensive big men, not an offensive big yeah. man, and that's what they need. That's what Julius Randle kind of was because he's more of like a small yeah. forward kind of thing. But it'd be a shame if Giannis ended up there. <laughs> you could take Mo Bamba. No, and honestly, I think a, a, a matchup with the Sixers would be really bad for the Knicks because um, we just we just have nobody that can really counter mm-hmm. Embiid offensively because like defensively you can like try to slow him down but then he's going to get every single foul call on the planet so it's not really gonna make a difference and like I, you can do some interesting things there I think like the Sixers guard play with Lowry um who I mean he's not the athlete he used to be but he was known in his prime for being a good defensive guard D'Anthony Melton's a good defensive guard mm-hmm. Tyrese Maxey plays some gritty defense he's more similarly sized to Jalen Brunson I think there's some interesting things you can do on the guard side of things to try to slow down Jalen. Oh, absolutely. You're not going to stop Jalen Brunson, but you can try to slow him down. Mm-hmm. The Knicks are going to have a really tough time. Guarding just, yeah. Cause like the thing is, just like you can't, cause 
even trying, not even just guarding Embiid, but like offensively, it's like you got to be able to counter that yep. kind of thing. Like they just mm. don't have because even if you double Embiid, he'll just kick it out to Buddy. Exactly. Or so it's like there's there's three. no real way to counter it because then it's like because then it gets into the point where it's like okay, well if we can't stop him, we're just gonna outshoot him. Yep. And like they just don't have that kind of talent unless every single three decides to hit in the same night and then it's like okay mm-hmm. fine they I, th- scored I think the best thing the knicks have done this year is like they're going to be competitive i hope they for their sake for your fan base sake mm-hmm. like it would be cool for you to win the series again i think a match up with the Cavs and winning that again going second round oh, would be yeah. good you just need that one more star yeah, and obviously that's Giannis. obviously, obviously that's, Giannis. that's what you want to be honest for Giannis. but um you need the one more star um again yeah. i'll keep saying it like throughout the entire playoff predictions stars win in the nba playoffs you need to have one of the top five at worst case top 10 players in the league so if Jalen, i don't think Jalen brunson's a top 10 player in the league no so the knicks are not going to win the playoffs or go go that deep be shame if the knicks drafted Bronny james <laughs> <laughs> okay how okay. LeBron in his career in new york that'd be crazy <laughs> bring him a ring those like ticket prices would be so high they would they might be ten thousand dollars yeah <laughs> like, it would be ridiculous <laughs> um moving down to orlando magic this is the team that's just happy to be there, here yeah um, they're young, magic. They're here. We had some chirping Orlando in our group magic. chat today about the magic. Um, somebody was saying that they were good. I'm sorry, the magic, not that good of a <laughs> uh, team. They are two games back of being the eight seed. And this is in a conference that's just been riddled by injuries mm-hmm. and like poor teams all year that like, I think they're just really happy to be here again, similar to the bucks. They're 18 and 21 on the road and they don't win against good. They don't win against 500 teams. So like, on the road against a team like the Sixers, like I just think they lose both games outright. Sorry, I was, I was just no, literally just checking the group chat. So <laughs> see what everybody was saying about so the like, magic. You're gonna lose all three games on the road against a lot of these teams, and then like you have to win all yeah. four at home if you have home court. Like I just think it's a tough path. Yeah, um, they're a team that's really predicated on their defense. They're not really a good offensive team, and it's like your defense is great, but like. How are you going to be able to score? score? Like, like, yeah. You need to score against. You're these not teams. holding these teams to seventy points. No, <laughs> like um, they've been fun this year. Yeah, um, and there's been a lot of positive steps for them. I just don't see them like making a big impact in the playoffs. But it's it's going to be very good for them to make the playoffs. yes, hundred percent to be able to say like, look, young roster, a lot of talent here, made it. We just need some stars now. Yeah. yeah. I think for a guy like Paolo Bancaro, just to get him on TV more. Oh my god, mm-hmm. he is so under. You don't hear a peep. Nope, not a peep about him. And he's got like, he averages like twenty and ten. Yeah, Paolo, like we talked about a little bit. Paolo had a great rookie year. Yeah, um, he was number one overall pick. People thought that might have been drafted. He might have been yeah. dra- overdrafted at number one. Um, I love the pick personally. I said I would do that. So that's a good take by me. Um, <laughs> I said it on the podcast two years ago. Um, but like he was number one overall pick. He had a great rookie year last year. Mm-hmm. Made a good, made some, made some good progress this year. He doesn't have a great yep. team around him. Um, they drafted Jalen Suggs. He had a terrible first year. It's yeah. been better this year. Um, so just these like they've made these good moves, and I think it's good that they're in the playoffs. But I just don't think I don't see them. Winning. <laughs> I don't. I don't see them winning no. a first round they're series. Not doing anything. The Cleveland Cavaliers, a Frauds. team that's been all over the place all year, they could win a series. I think mm-hmm. they could because they could run into like the Pacers, the Magic. Are these the under five hundred merchants? No. no Oh, they might be. I don't know. Yes, I they they were at one yes. point. The, uh, oh, yeah, no, you're right. Because we talked about this on the podcast where yeah. they they were like one in like it was early <laughs> it, season. They were was, like two in like twelve against teams over five hundred. And then they were undefeated. Twenty eight and yeah. zero against other teams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're gonna have a really tough time in the playoffs beating winning teams. Yeah. Um, but I think their core of Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland, I think Evan Mobley and Jared might be out. Um, mm-hmm. Jared Allen, like those guys, they can offer a little bit more star power against a team like the Magic. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if they can beat anybody else yeah yeah because i mean the knicks just upright outright beat him last year and the knicks are better this year they'll lose julius randall but i still think without julius randall they're still a better team than last year absolutely also donovan mitchell hmm could have chose the mix you could interesting have. yeah um i think the knicks are pretty happy they didn't do that now mm-hmm. absolutely um and then the indiana pacers just bet the over yeah <laughs> just, <laughs> just bet, bet the over the, they are going to be shooting the lights out the gym they're, they're fun they'll be a fun playoff team yeah, yeah. talking about the pacers sorry our mics died of course we can never get through an episode no. without some type of difficulty <laughs> um cursed batteries and I, I wish i could just plug this into the wall but whatever um anyway pacers they'll be fun i don't see them going that far like if they want a first round that'd be cool mm. That's about it. It's and, gonna be great for betting when you bet the over on yeah, every yeah. player stats. Yeah. But now let's talk about the Miami Heat because <sighs> they are like the looming eight seed right now. Again, yep. they notoriously <laughs> made a run as an eight seed last year. They're just chilling at the eight spot right now. They can maybe move up a little bit. But like, what do we think about the Heat? 
they're not going to do a miracle run again. Let's be I, very clear. They're not. I think whatever happens, wherever they end up, their first round exit, and we're going to be like, no. Nah. Like, See, I hope they play the Celtics just because it would be so funny if Jimmy Butler knocks the Celtics out of the playoffs. I think that that team lost so much depth mm-hmm. this past offseason. And they just like they're just not the same team that they were when they were yeah. an eight seed. They were when they were the eight seed before, they were much more like what the Sixers are now, where mm-hmm. it's like they could be really dangerous. But now it's they're kind of just like eh. Who they have it's Butler, Bam, um, the dude from UCLA. And that's I mean, it. I mean, and then um Duncan? Tyler Duncan Hero? Robinson, Duncan Robinson, Tyler Hero is hurt. Uh, well, damn. Yeah, um, again. That's it. I yeah. All I want for Christmas is <laughs> Miami Heat to get swept. <laughs> I'm so sick of this team. If people don't know, I'm a certified Miami Heat hater. I just don't like how, like, again, they, they've been, they've, Jimmy Butler always has a little bit of injuries, whatever. Mm-hmm. Tyler Hero obviously hurt. For the most part, this team has been intact all year, and they are the eighth seed. Yeah. Again, when, like, there's been so much, the Knicks have been hurt all year. Yeah. Like, Jalen Brunson has been out for some time. Uh, Randall's they, been out forever. R- Randall's been out forever. OG, OG was, was hurt out. after you traded for him. Yeah. At, RJ Hart Barrett was, was hurt, hurt before yeah. that. Hart, like they've been injured all year. The Bucks have been a disaster. This is the year to get them and be a higher seed than them. Didn't happen. The Cavs have been injured this year. The Pacers and Magic. You don't actually think they're good teams. Mm-hmm. The Sixers lost the MVP of the league for thirty games this year. Yeah, yeah. and they're still a higher seed than you at the moment. Like it kills me <laughs> that they're like <laughs> they're in this eight spot. And that's why I just want them to like, go play the Celtics and just get whacked. See, I just want to see the Celtics lose because the path for the Sixers gets oh, so much Oh, that would literally easier. be free. You would get yeah. a one-way ticket to getting swept by the Denver Nuggets. I would. Well, that's okay. <laughs> I would gladly be swept by the Denver Nuggets <laughs> Yeah, just to make the finals. Yeah. I just want to see us make it up the second round. Also, Embiid owns Jokic, so we would not get swept. Um, at, oh, wow. It would be a gentleman sweep. Yeah. Oh, no. So if you... Okay, here's a question. Miami Heat, Milwaukee Bucks, first round series. Who wins? Heat versus Bucks. The two seven the matchups. Bucks. The Bucks still win. The Bucks they, 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 they still should. Win. Although oh, it's playoff, Jimmy. Mm, and Giannis might not play. I oh. I think the Heat I think might the Heat win. They could. That. I could Especially see with a it. little oh, bit. It's of, the bubble. All over it's again. the bubble all over again. I think with a little bit of a tweak cap from oh, Giannis. It was also like last year when Jimmy Butler was like sideways shooting yep. the bank shot to win. I, I hate to say it, but I think with a little bit of a tweak cap from Giannis. <laughs> oh, no. Bam Adebayo is a great defensive oh, matchup no. for him. Wait, if the Heat beat the Bucks, does that mean they have to play the Celtics the next round? There's no reseeding. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah. Wait, is there? Wait. No. I don't think so. That, that wasn't Give me a question. second. I don't think so. If there is receding, oh no. Oh, good lord. Have Jimmy knock out the two top seeds for us? Dude, literally just make it so free. No, they aren't. They aren't receding. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I get the NBA and FL mix up because actually this only happens like once every year if yeah. you think about this. So, um, no receding. So, it would be a second round series would be like, again, it's so hard right now to tell with the matchups. It would be the winner of the 3 6, which right now would be the Knicks Pacers. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm a little bit concerned with the Heat. But um, I just don't, like, I want the Sixers to just get out of the play in spot with the Heat. Yeah. Um, because I prefer not to be the eighth seed. Um, yeah. Again, you don't want to play the Celtics in the first mm. round um, because they've been so good this year. But that's the East. Who, who, I think we're all still feeling confident the Celtics, Celtics will make it out of the East. It should be the Celtics. Well, there will be some bloodbath series at the bottom. Oh, yeah. I think the Sixers narrative is super fun. Um, sneaky little Atlanta Hawks team could maybe come in. Oh, and my God. I, no, what would hit like crack is the Sixers destroying Miami in a play-in game. Then <laughs> the Atlanta Hawks winning. Atlanta Hawks coming up and just beating the crap out of Miami. Miami doesn't even make the playoffs. Oh my, I'd be so happy. I'd be so happy. <laughs> Justin is like foaming at oh, the mouth. He hates <laughs> the heat. Nothing. What about heat culture? Miami Vice jerseys. <laughs> the heat. <laughs> oh God, I got to put a time stamp in for that. <laughs> So are we going to move on to the West now? Ooh, we got LeBron versus Steph as a potential play-in. Dude, they, weren't they playing like two years ago? Oh, last year. Last, last year. year. I was about to say, like, I feel like they've been playing, mm-hmm. uh, playing each other recently in the playoffs. Mm, yeah. I don't know. I think I'm making up last year. Two years ago. I thought I it was two years ago, I think. You absolute rat bastards. I was right, wasn't uh, I? You, I think it was two years ago, yeah. You bastards. <laughs> yeah, it was Lakers in Minnesota last year. Anyway. Yeah, that's right. That was um, screwed or. Didn't Cat sell last season? Yeah, Cat sold. He was Cat always sells. Cat well, yeah. was terrible in that series. <laughs> Ant was good. Ant might also be the other son of Michael Jordan, but we'll ignore yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
yeah. So last night, again, according on Wednesday, Tuesday, the Warriors beat the Lakers, which put a big like problem in the playing game because the Lakers at one point had moved up to the seven line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was like, oh, could they get out of the playing game? Now yep. they're like, oh my god, are they gonna like they don't control their own destiny? They don't have the tiebreaker over the Warriors, so they could just yeah. be the ten seed outright because yeah. the Warriors have played one less game than them. Mm -hmm. So now you're looking at a situation where the Lakers might be the 10 seed. Yeah. I mean, they went two games on the road just to make the playoffs, <laughs> um, which is just super fascinating. Yeah. When the funny thing is, all these teams actually pretty good. The Lakers, yeah. like, they could both beat any team in the league besides the Nuggets because Joker always does the stupidest yep. crap against them <laughs> or lose to any team in the yep, league. 100%. It literally just depends on who decides to show yep, up that game. Basically, it's, it's so fascinating. There's so many storylines. I mean, like, the way we think about this is like the Mavericks are the five seed, right? Two games back of them is the Pelicans. One game back of the Pelicans is the Suns. One game back of the Suns are the Kings. Is Ramadan still going on? Today was the last, the last day. day yeah. <sighs> Damn it, no more Ramadan Kyrie. Yeah. Um, and then game back, half a game back of the Kings are the Lakers, and half a game back of the <laughs> Lakers are the Warriors. Like, it's all stacked in yeah. there. There's so many possibilities, so it'll be fun. But at the top, we have the Timberwolves and Nuggets, who are tied for the 1 2 matchup. The fun part is they play each other tonight oh, on boy. ESPN at 10 30. <laughs> T damn it why uh -oh. is the game so late <laughs> it's uh, going to hit like crack oh, um, God. i'm gonna bet on this game and what's fun also is cat's coming back from his injury he might be back for the cat playoffs. i'm betting the cat over oh, so God. well he's not playing tonight Ugh. um but <laughs> but he's coming back so very interesting one two like mm -hmm. the nuggets win tonight they get the one seed and mm -hmm. of course yep. we know how good the nuggets are at home like they just don't lose so that would be scary mm -hmm. but then like they have two seed being the Timberwolves is scary with Cat, Gobert, Edwards, like all of them there. Yeah. And the three line, you get the Thunder. Um, they'll they'll hold that spot. They're only one game out. They probably don't climb up mm -hmm. at this point so late in the season. But it, well, not really. I say that, but if they win tonight, I don't know if they play tonight, but they win their next game and the Timberwolves or Nuggets lose a game, mm -hmm. like they could end up being two seed. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you kind of have the Clippers, two game gap down the Mavericks. And I wanted to talk about the Mavericks here. They look so cool. Man. Nine and one in their last 10 games. They look so good. Like, well, uh -oh. Ramadan Kyrie has been utterly ridiculous over this past yeah. couple weeks. What I wanted to mention is there was a series where the uh, Clippers and Mavericks played yeah. recently and Luca just destroyed them. Oh that was the God. year that they beat. That was the year they made the conference finals and they yep. beat, um, and they beat, uh, LeBron, not LeBron. They beat the Suns that year. That was the yep. year that like the, the infamous kind of, yeah. everybody acting yep. tough when they up. Yep. And so I think a Mavericks Clippers series <sighs> with Luca would be so fun. Mm -hmm. I would absolutely oh, be so much fun. I oh my god, because like they just as like I say this all the time with like any sports team, they need to get good at the right time. The Mavs are getting good exactly at the yep. right time, and they look horrifying yep. right now. It's a the guard plays out of this world. Yeah. Um. I don't know if they have enough like big like big, big man, man talent but to compete like, with the best. They teams. look ridiculous. Yeah, and I absolutely think I think it'll be probably end up being a Clippers. Clippers are pretty much locked in the four seed. Mm -hmm. um, if they lose lose out and teams win out, maybe they could flip four or five. But for the most part, it's going to be the Mavericks and Clippers, depending on who has home court at this point. God, um, that's so, going to be so much fun, yeah. dude! So fun. Um, let's talk about the uh, Pelicans holding the sixth spot right now. A game back of them are the Suns. Zion is no longer fat. But this Crazy. is like the key part with them is like the six seven lines a big deal because yeah like the play in is going to be so good you could just be, you could be the Pelicans right now in the playoffs playing the Thunder which you'd be pretty happy with mm -hmm. but you could just lose out yeah like you could lose to the Kings who hold the eight seed right now and then lose to the Lakers and then suddenly and then you're, you're done you're done you're not even in the playoffs right now so the Suns play the Clippers they lost last night to the Clippers that was bad they played the Clippers again tonight mm -hmm. on a back to back mm -hmm. if you're the Suns, you need to get out of the seventh spot. Yeah. How are the Suns the seventh With seed? Beal, they've been injured, Buck, so, they've been um, in, so injured this year. Like just because they've been has, so injured all has year. Has Beal played at all? I could. I don't even know how many games. I'll do some research real quick, but I don't. There's been a very short number of games that Beal, Booker, and Durant have all. played I was just together. about to say because, like, I feel like that was like the big, like, sort mm -hmm. of like blockbuster thing where it was like, oh, they're making another super team. Kevin Durant's a fraud. He only <laughs> plays <laughs> at super teams, and then. Beal just hasn't played at yeah. all. Booker, I haven't heard a peep from Booker all he's year. He's been having dog. He's been having like fifty point games as of recent, but that's yeah, it. But like that's my thing is like, yeah, he's been like obviously he's still Devin Booker. Mm -hmm. like, he's still really really good at basketball. But like I just haven't heard much about yeah. the Suns because it's just they kind of just like lose, mm -hmm. and it's just like I don't know. Like they got Kevin Durant, they got De Devin Booker, and then after that, I don't know. It's weird, but I mean, Justin, you're getting the uh, the last things up right now. Well, like, is it? Like, 
I have January like report like they oh, played seven okay. four ga- seven well, four games. Once there. the season ends, they'll probably mm-hmm. come out with like that kind of yeah. Reporting. But like but, they have not played many games with all three of them intact. It's like the Nets situation all over. Yeah, again. it literally is the big three Nets where none of them are on the court at the same time. So yeah, it just doesn't matter. They had a rough start. Um, I still think it's a, a situation where you don't want to play that team. Like if you're the oh no, I'm gonna say Mavericks and Clippers are locked in. If you're like mm-hmm. the Thunder and you're like. Gosh, we had to go play Kevin Durant, Devin yeah, Booker, and don't... Bradley Beal in the first round. Like, no, no, we're good. Like, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. <laughs> um, the Nuggets probably don't care. Even the Timberwolves, like, they don't want to play them either. Yeah. Like, they're just a very scary team, and they're holding the seven line right now. Like, yeah, if you're the two seed Timberwolves, you would you wanna... prefer just to lose out and get the three line so you don't have to play the Suns in the first round? Because yeah, you don't then want like, oh well, <laughs> you have a great. You have a great team. Don't worry. But Kevin Durant decided to up 50 in multiple games. Also, some people might forget. I feel like that era of basketball is a little bit lost. Like the Suns have a lot of championship experience on their team. Uh, Devin Booker was in the championship. People forget the Suns made the finals one year. And then Kevin Durant has obviously is an NBA championship. Like they they know how to play in the playoffs. Their games translate well to the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So playing a team like the Timberwolves who have had putrid playoff success, <laughs> um or play in success because they don't even make the playoffs sometimes um and when they do they ce- celebrate like they won the finals um, <laughs> oh my god i like, forgot about that meme so um i think them, them playing the team like the sun is like a the worst case scenario mm-hmm. right there um but they're an interesting team to be on the playoff playing bubble because they would be right now matched up with the kings yeah and like mm-hmm. a win or go home not technically but go home but like yeah. winner game go home game and of course, you got the Lakers and Warriors who just like Every it feels year. like LeBron and Steph like they won't have to leave go. us alone, but yeah. they just keep coming from like the the low seed. They're it's just the old heads who are like, ah, remember the good old days? <laughs> yeah, you remember the good old days eight years ago? Yeah, I remember LeBron's that. LeBron's playing with team like former players, kids now. Oh yeah, yeah. He's it's probably insane. gonna play with his son if you know the LeBron draft's about to start. Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on the potential for the Lakers or the Warriors to make a run in the playoffs this year? Lakers have a much better chance of making yeah. a run than the Warriors. The Warriors um, have the CP3 curse on them now. The Warriors, A, have the CP3 curse. B, Draymond Green is tearing that team apart from the inside. And he went five for five from three. Oh, th- thank Somehow. God. Yeah, once. After he decided to actually stay on the court and not punch somebody in the face for once. I mean, like... I think the Lakers have a the talent, b the experience, and c they literally have proven they can beat any team in the league mm-hmm. if they decide to. Yeah, but of course they could just decide not to and get bounced in the first round, or not even make the playoffs. Very possible. So they it's lose just, to the Warriors and just get yeah. Exactly. So it like it really depends. I obviously Steph Curry is still unbelievable, but I just don't know if like that raw like the way the roster is built now. I just don't know if they still have like the talent. Mm-hmm. Clay is really pretty much washed now. He's basically washed. And then what they have? I mean, uh, Gary Payton Jr. is mm-hmm. still pretty good on defense and everything. But like besides Steph, like who else do they have on offense? Yeah. I think my I know the Warriors have been playing well. They're eight and two in their last ten games. They beat the Lakers last night. I think when you get into like a, they can scheme for like you can scheme for one team specifically. There's a lot of deficiencies there. Like look at the Lakers. The Warriors are gonna have a really tough time with their size. Um, it's obviously, Davis, Kaminga LeBron. Play, guards yeah. LeBron, Draymond guards AD. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's gonna go like, well. You can do that. Does that go well? Probably not. Um, well, you know what? It will go well because they're just gonna t- tell Draymond to just break Anthony Davis's knees. And yeah, you're right. Win, yeah. So, but like even the Kings matchup, like it's just like you got they played the Warriors last year. Yeah. Um, in a tight seven game series, like they're not better team. And this the year. Kings are like are, what well, they're basically in the same position they were last year. But mm-hmm. I mean they're. They could shoot the lights out the gym again. They're, yeah. they're similar to like the the Pacers, where they could just like look. They might lose, but they're going to be putting up 140 points. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Light the peak in. <laughs> so I don't light the beam. I don't see the Warriors making a run. And like let's like they're not going to beat the Nuggets or the Timberwolves. I'm pretty confident in those are the one and two seeds. <laughs> I'd hope so. They can only end up being the eight seed. So the matchup like likely unless the Thunder just like kind of go on a little run here, they're going to play either the Timberwolves and the Nuggets. I don't see them. They're not beating either of those. They're not not beating either of those teams. So therefore, they have no potential to make a run. Yeah. Um. If they could get to, if they could play the Thunder, maybe I'd feel a little bit differently. I still don't think I would feel any differently. Um. The Lakers obviously do. I think people forget like this team won the play-in tournament and like yeah, it was an early season thing, but it was a small representative picture of what could happen in a winner takes all. Yeah. One game, we're gonna scheme against you and play our best basketball with a lot of energy and a lot of focus. And they won the whole thing. Mm-hmm. And they played like the Pelicans were playing great at the time. They were the one seed, I think, at the time. Yep. They beat them. The Pacers were playing great at the time. Beat them. Like they beat these good teams in the play in tournament. 
They went, they were terrible after the playing tournament for a little bit. That's why their seating is so bad, but they've been really good. Like, like, I don't know. Like I think people looked at the game yesterday and was like, Oh, oh they they're lost. terrible. They didn't have AD. The Warriors shot the best percentage from three. The for entire teams year. That shoot, shoot over 43. Yeah. <laughs> it's the greatest three point shooting game in the history. And they beat the Lakers by seven. Yeah. And Darvin Ham <laughs> Wait, and, Darvin, seven. <laughs> and Darvin Ham sold. Yeah. yeah, like he played this lineup that played zero minutes all year. They got score outscored fifteen to five. Oh my god! In the end of the third quarter, so the Lakers were down like an extra ten points going. Into so the okay, so like they had quite possibly the stars align, and they only won by seven without AD on the court. Mm-hmm. And people are like, "See, I told you, the Lakers are the frauds. War- the Lakers are the Lakers are frauds. The Warriors are a team to be like reckoned with." Like, <laughs> it's like, no, that's not happening. <laughs> I four can, games. In a I row. can almost <laughs> promise you. The Lakers are going to beat the Warriors in a first round play in matchup, and everyone's gonna be like, How'd that happen? Damn. Like I really <laughs> want the Warriors to make a run here. Like Steph Curry's cool, but it's just Steph Curry and like Jonathan Kaminga. Like it's Steph, Kaminga, Nat is not better than LeBron and AD. <laughs> like, and then just the not. Lakers players are better on the side. So unless yeah. the Warriors again have a great shooting performance, they're not gonna beat the Lakers in a winner take it all game. They're not gonna beat the Nuggets, they're not gonna beat the Timberwolves, therefore they have no chance of making a run. They're also one and four in overtime games. And that's a little bit concerning. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, Ugh. I agree. Yeah, this is going to be a bloodbath. Yeah, yeah, the whole I mean, the NBA is a whole right now. is super exciting. Yeah. It's going to be so like there's fun, just dude. a lot of fun I haven't things. seen a playoff picture like this where, where it's like, like everybody's close. kind of like, well, besides Boston. But but the thing is, like below yeah. Boston, everybody's still yeah, the Boston's crap. regular season. Merchants. Let's, look, like, let's look at the games tonight. Right. And this is just how crazy seating is. Grizzlies Cavs, a game that you would think means nothing for the gri- Grizzlies. It means everything for the like if the Cavs lose the game they might get down to the playing game That's so like insane. so like, we think the Cavs will win the game the Grizzlies are not really playing anyone right now they're in tank mode yeah but what if the Grizzlies win yeah like the Cavs are like it's a big game Mavericks heat is more important for the heat than the Mavericks but the Mavericks still want to win games they still can maybe yeah. move up and get home court advantage like that's huge if the heat lose they're pretty they're much going to get yeah. the eight seed yeah and then they're gonna have to play Boston if well they could play the first round game but yeah. they won't have home court mm-hmm. for it the Mavericks again want to continue the success of having their great team. Raptors Nets doesn't matter. Yeah. Hornets Hawks it does matter for the Hawks because they could get yeah. home court in a, a, a play a winner takes all game mm-hmm. against the Bulls. Bulls. So that matters a little bit. Spurs Thunder the th- Sun Thunder hat first of all is a Chet uh, Wemby matchup which is fun. Yeah. But also the Thunder need to win to have still a chance to get to the one seed. Yeah. Bucks Magic without Giannis. It's huge. Like we talked about that. Like they're the Magic are like a game and a half out of the Bucks. The Bucks are games from falling down. The Magic need to avoid like it still yeah. fall into the playing game. The Timberwolves and Nuggets are playing for the number one seed <laughs> yeah, in the Western Conference right now. at ten o'clock. Yeah. The, the, the Suns play the Clippers again. The Suns are on the playoff, like play in playoff like yeah, like, window. Edge. It's huge. Yeah. This is so it's yeah. it's awesome. And then we have like games on Thursday that matter. Knicks Celtics. Huge game. You huge. The Pistons. Huh? What? We got the Pistons. Shut yeah, sorry, the Bulls play the Pistons. <laughs> yeah, Rockets, Jazz doesn't matter. The Pelicans play the Kings. The Kings are in the playing game right now. Could move up to the sixty. Yeah. Like, if the Kings win that game and the Pelicans lose, the Pelicans could fall into the playing game. The Kings could leapfrog and get into the actual playoffs. Yeah. Then the Warriors play this game against the Trailblazers, which is going to matter for seeding. Yeah. Then the day after that, you have. A matchup Sixers and Magic, which is another huge, huge game. <laughs> the Pacers and Cavs play each other. <laughs> yeah. They're both teams that like they're 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 six, like four and five. They're, like, yeah, they're, right now they're five and six. Yeah, like, like five and six. Like one yeah. of those teams that they lose, like if the Cavs lose tonight, they lose against the Pacers, they're gonna drop to the seventh seed. <laughs> like that's so important. <laughs> like, and this is all the last three games of the season. Yep. And then there's this like small game here that like, is different conference. The Bucks Thunder. The Bucks have to play the Magic, the Thunder, and the Magic again. Yeah. To make to get their seating, they could fall. Let me look at the seating again. It, it's just like mind boggling. If the Bucks lose out, they could fall to. Is three games left? Yeah, yeah. three games. Uh, if my math is right, they. I don't think it's possible for them to fall until play in, but like close six like there'd be like they so they would go from two to six yeah yeah so six are, six are three and a half games back mm-hmm. the paces are two and a half games back they could fall to the six yeah maybe, maybe not with tiebreakers but like mm-hmm. generally they could fall to a five six matchup and they could lose all their three games outright because they're not playing like like it's absolutely crazy <laughs> so much going on so for all those that say oh the the nba is boring like none of the games matter the games matter right yeah. now if you're gonna watch at any time now is the time to watch i don't like you don't play- watch nba in march you watch it in april <laughs> yes. i don't like the nba playing game okay 
Sorry. Yeah. yeah whatever. Even this a game is... late, late in the season, Lakers Pelicans. Yeah. On three thirty on Sunday. Yeah. Sunday. That game is everything. Like the Lakers could move up if the Pelicans lose again. The Lakers are two games out of the Pelican spot. Like yeah. they could, that could still happen if the Pelicans lose out. Suns Timberwolves. Well, the Timberwolves fall <laughs> to the three seed. Can the like yeah everything fire me up. <laughs> fire the NBA me up. is back. Yep. We have the play-in game on April sixteenth, which is six short days away. Uh oh, it's gonna be very exciting. Jesus Christ, I'm here for the ride. A lot more basketball content to come. I think I got to throw my futures bet down on the Sixers. Oh, boy. Here we go. So you our, just cursed them. <laughs> so our plan for next week is going to be a little complicated with the NBA draft and with basketball. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about Wait, situations. NBA, NFL. NFL, NFL. Draft, okay. The next Tuesday we'll record. The playing games will be that night. So we'll kind of preview what the playoff picture mm-hmm. looks like potentially. Yep. And then we're going to do our 2024 Coconut Curry mock, mock draft. drafts. We're going to each be a team. We'll do... There's 32 teams. Yeah, we we'll yes. each pick three teams. Some people have one person out two At teams. One, I we'll, select Drake we, May. We can make t- we can make trades with each other. We can make <laughs> trades and everything. And then also we can do uh, we can also do uh, points at the end yeah. and see uh. who got the most points <laughs> and see who who wins. Yeah, it'll be fun. Anything else, boys? I like it. No. All right. Then we will see. A lot you. of content. If you made it this far, again another long episode. If you made it this far, thanks for watching. Thank you. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Give us that viewer attention. Other than that, we will see you next time. Yeah. Coconut Curry Podcast. Reed Blankenship and Cooper Dijon are going to be a nasty Dijon? duo. Dijon.